All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, where last we left our intrepid adventurers, we'd done a quick deconstruction and chunking the sentence from the extract. So our next step now is to work out exactly how those little sections of information are conveying knowledge to us. So let's have a look here. If you look in your uh, documents, you'll see that I've created a little template for you. And I've taken what we worked on last video and transcribed it across here and color coded it so that I can just keep a track of each little section. Somewhere there on that desolate plain was lurking this fiendish man, hiding in a burrow like a wired beast, his heart full of malignancy against the whole race which had cast him out. Fantastic. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I transcribe that into this table. And what you will see is that I've got a row of what the author wrote. So this is what's from the original story. Okay, there it is there. And then underneath each of those, we're going to work out what is the language actually doing in that section. And once we've done all that, we're going to come back and we're going to write our own version mimicking Doyle's writing style. All right. So first of all, we've got somewhere there. And somewhere there is a bit of a vague direction in relation to the narrator. Oh, Okay, that's really important. And then on that desolate, it's sort of an adjective creating mood and spatial relationship to the narrator. Um, so that over there and desolate um, being a very mysterious kind of term. Over here, we've got the actual location itself. That's the plane. It's telling us where it is. All right, moving on to our next bit, was lurking. Well, this is sort of an ominous behavior from the unnamed uh, individual. Whoops. We spell good. Um, the ominous behavior from the individual in this situation, the individual's a criminal, but when you come to rewriting it, could be anybody else. So this fiendish man, we're finally identifying who that individual is. So this is an adjective describing the individual. Hiding in a burrow is sort of the action being taken by the individual, um, but it's worth noting that the narrator is still thinking about what that person's doing. So it's the imagined action taken by the individual. And like a wild beast is the animal simile, linking the individual to the animal. Okay, we've got a comma there, so we need to make sure we remember that. And down here, we've got his heart, which is, um, in this situation, it's an emotionally symbolic thing. It's an organ in the body that, generally speaking, when you refer to it, it refers to emotions such as love, hate, so on and so forth. So this um, thing is symbolic of an emotion. So full of malignancy is then describing that motion. I'm really good with my spelling here, better fix that up. Okay, against the whole race, well, that's at whom the emotion is directed. And which had cast him out. Well, this is what society or the group did to the individual. Okay, so if we were to take this and turn this into a story of our own i think it might go a little bit like this so a vague direction in relation to the narrator okay so i'm going to say down there comma that's a vague direction in relation to me on that desolate how might i write that oh okay so this has got to be an adjective creating mood and a spatial relationship to me, the narrator. So I'm going to say inside this decrepit, okay, so rather than on that, I've said inside this, and rather than desolate, I've written decrepit because I think that's a, a good mood kind of room. Sorry, word. Um, okay, so a location, I'm going to go with classroom. Aha, uh -huh. 
don't forget my comma because it's in the original, so I have to have a comma here. Okay, I'm coming along to the ominous behavior from the unnamed individual. So I'm going to say was patiently waiting. Okay, now I'm finally going to name the individual. So I need an adjective describing the individual. So I'm going to say the cunning teacher. Aha. All right, now the imagined action taken by the individual. Mm, you know what, I'm going to keep this one simple. I'm just going to say sitting. I mean, I could go on to say sitting in a chair um, or sitting on, you know what, let's, let's do that. Let's say perching on the edge of a table. Let's go with that, perching on the edge of a table. Okay, now I need to turn this into an animal simile. Um, so I need to think of an animal that perches, oh, I know, like a vulture awaiting prey. There we go. I like that. Man, I'm good at this thing. I should be an English teacher or something. All right. Now, the next thing in the original sentence was his heart full of malignancy against the whole race, which had cast him out. So I need an emotionally symbolic thing. This is to stand in place of the heart. Let me bring that a bit closer to make it a little bit easier. There we go. An emotionally symbolic thing. Well, look, I'm going to stick with the concept of using an internal organ for the moment. I'm going to go with his brain. His brain. Okay. Description of the emotion. Let me see. Um, okay, I'm going to go with overflowing with clever activities. Okay, well, it's not really an emotion, but it's something that the brain does. It thinks. Um, maybe I can do that. Let's go with clever ideas. Um, against the whole race at whom the emotion is directed. So who are the, these ideas directed? Oh, okay, well, for his students. And why, what did they do to him, the teacher? Oh, well, this is easy. Who left him to work from their own homes. It's my spelling because all work should be our best quality. All right, so what I've actually got now is down there inside this decrepit classroom was patiently waiting the cunning teacher, perching on the edge of a table like a vulture awaiting prey, his brain overflowing with clever ideas for his students who left him to work from their own homes. All right, obviously I'm working through a few things here. Bear with me. So your job now is to go through and write your own version. Where I've written the story, or sorry, the sentence about the, the teacher waiting, you're now going to go and do that. So please go through, fill in the boxes of what the language does using what I've just said, and then fill in your own written version of this story. All right, that's your next step. Thank you very much, and wait for the next video for instructions.